The authors certainly hoped that you would despise the villains, the bunch boasting about having abducted women for their evil amusement. It's interesting to see how the class is dividing into groups. If the goddess had already disposed of the pupils who failed the exam prior to her deal with the S-Class hero girl, I wouldn't be shocked. She is just an asshole and knows there is nothing anyone can do about it. She isn't even that manipulative. She declares unequivocally that she doesn't care if someone is killed who she believes to be unworthy. After the MC kills the boss monster, I wonder whether any more creatures are still around in the disposal's ruins. I find it funny how wicked all of the MC's shy classmates are. Although I generally detest large group transportation IKEAs, my gosh, what a freak I've become. These kids and instructors forced unrealistic attitudes are so ridiculous. It honestly made me giggle to see them instantly accept their positions as heroes and develop God complexes at the mention of ranks. Anyway, I'll watch every episode since this is so amazing. I did, however, pick up the manga. Simply put, the CGI is terrible. My goodness, the CGI completely ruins the otherwise excellent narrative, even if I enjoy the multiple views. For example, MC might be 2D one minute and 3D the next for no apparent reason. It's poor quality, startling, and distracting. It is quite strange to see excellent artwork combined with awful 3D. We learn more about the other passengers on the bus and their experiences. It is still unclear if the main character will find the best girl, Ayaka, considering that she most likely believes the MC is dead or whether they will part ways for good. In these kinds of, and here's what's happening with MC's classmates, situations I wonder if the entire school group will be continuously alluded at or if it will be more of an aspect that is ignored entirely. Given that she may be working for the individuals he just killed, of course she was their target MC's the suspicions about the guy she met make reasonable, but that is simply the omniscient viewer's point of view. MC is cautious and sensible. I guess knowledge grows with experience, at least in this life. Yes, Cirrus is attractive, but in this world of Isekai, I think Mamori made the right decision. In this world, I would trust the slime more than anybody else. Sugo and Kabato are the only live human characters who have demonstrated kindness with the exception of Mamori. He could never have said to a damn slime, you're just like me. Another option is to have a cast of villains that don't employ rape as a plot device. The classic companion for slime. The classmates are terrible, but I won't pass judgment on the one who appeared to be planning an all-girl party. Although she used harsh language, she is also quickly realizing how brutal the world is and is bringing some of the less prepared females with her. We are possibly lucky not to have been lured with Elf Knight content a third time and lucky for Tuka to come along at exactly the perfect moment and ruin that group searching for her. The upcoming episode appears to revolve around her once more, perhaps that's when she reunites with Tuka. Man, these other worlds clothing really are a complete waste of time. This elf girl is attempting to conceal, but the clothing she is wearing essentially just covers her nipples in the chest region. That goddess is completely nude and nothing is hidden by the trash she is wearing. It's funny how the show kind of portrays our MC as a morally great anti-hero upholding his own personal code of justice, but we see so many of his classmates acting like total edgelords once they get their powers. It's funny because he's just as much of an edgelord as that glasses wearing kid who laughs evilly whenever he shows up. Though it's not the usual opinion, I was relieved to see so much computer-generated imagery in this episode since it gives us a lot more motion than we would have otherwise. If this had been one of the other low-budget isekai, the princess character's dance would have only consisted of two still frames. For once, it's good not to have a slideshow. It is nearly impossible to watch this kind of Photoshop animation. It is essentially dragging clip art around the screen. Behind the scenes, I imagine there were some production issues of some kind. This show CGI is so strange, but I'm growing accustomed to it and don't mind it too much. A mainly static photo of a person in some slime, did they really need CGI for that? Or for two conversing persons, it was an odd scenario in which the bandits, holy watchers, whatever that implies, ran into MC. They're pursuing the girl, the scene builds to a confrontation, and then it suddenly cuts to them meeting him. At first, I assumed they were behind her, but it was simply a glimpse of them through the forest. And was the purpose of the deed to make them less defensive or something else entirely? When will the female from the AP looks like a dark elf appear? Her design is absolutely lovely, considerably cuter than Sarah's. In a 30 second span, how are you going to attempt to befriend, recruit, threaten, and sexually abuse someone? This class, aside from two individuals, is so corrupt that it would be better if they all went to hell. Then this bitch goddess over here is giving the S-rank girl who just woke up pretending like she wasn't the one who sent all these people to their deaths and got rid of Mamori, an Emmy-worthy performance complete with phony-ass tears. I can't stand it if her death is quick and painless and needs to be protracted and drawn out. In this series, the CGI is still utterly repulsive. What's up with even still pictures of Mamori chatting to people being CGI? I didn't even notice last week that about half of the opening sequence was CGI. For example, the scene in which he first meets Pigimaru is computer-generated imagery. 
Is it truly the case that they were too lazy to just sketch that? It is impossible for fantasy writers to include rapey bandits in their narrative challenges. I found it really unsettling to learn that the Holy Watchers discuss raping princesses and even robbing girls of their towns to use as sex toys. You know they've done it before if they were discussing doing it to her. They died far too quickly, giving them an unfair advantage. However, it was fascinating to see some of the skills Mamori had acquired. They are providing for all of our needs, but where is the elf waifu? Man, you realize why we're here. Stop wasting our time, please. Hopefully the Witch of Taboos and our ability to decode that writing will advance in the upcoming episode. To be honest, the Piggy Maru stuff might have been trimmed. Level 18 and looking so pleased that blonde guy MC is level 1, 700. To be honest, we don't know how the S rank class cheat skill skill scales up, thus level isn't that important. Although MC's physique has become stronger and he has more mana, his talents remain the same, save from their respective level increases. Since they were excessively powerful at level 1, there was no sign that they were getting stronger at his level. It implies that, even reaching a high degree, we are unsure of whether his abilities are still ineffective against the goddess. Poison appears to scale with the adversary, at the very least. He could never have killed such high-level creatures with a single casting of the spell if it were just a level 1 poison dealing a few HP and damage. It appears to be a one-shot kill. As a low-level caster, sleep and paralysis don't appear to get worse on high-level enemies. Between the two talents, he had plenty of time to dispatch every creature he encountered. If he could convince them to land and remain, the goddess would probably be killed. The time-honored tactic as the story revolves on retribution, the MC should, should kill people, but how can we enable his first kill? Okay, then create a caricature villain who everyone will detest right away and will applaud when they are killed. Issue resolved, really. The Princess Night Chick's expertise is depicted in really amazing art and animation, but what follows is some of the ugliest low-res computer graphics I have ever seen. They do things like cut to a hand-drawn version of the identical scene in which he is seen going away in computer graphics. Very strange. CG can look fantastic, but it always looks terrible when it's presumably employed as a cost-cutting technique. Although I suppose it's a good thing that there wasn't as much of it in this episode, the way it's intercut with the hand-drawn scenes is rather startling. 